Okay, keep in mind, we're going to be going over different sections, and these sections all overlap because this is a performance design and not a linear design. So each section spills over into the next in a lot of different ways. So if you don't understand something, a function the first time, there's a good chance I'll come back to it from a different angle, uh, which may help. Okay. So let's start off with voltage controlled oscillator one. The first thing you may notice about it is, hey, how do I set the wave shape here? The answer is, well, you don't set the wave shape here. You set the wave shape over here in the audio mixer where you make decisions about the audio, which I think is very interesting. This whole synthesizer, like I said, comes from the approach of modulation first, as if it is the source of synthesis. And it's really unique but it makes sense. Okay, let's stop talking about it and dive into it. The first thing you may notice here in oscillator one is the frequency. This is where we do our tuning. And you have quite a wide range. I have to say, although a lot of synthesizers don't allow you to do what we just did, which is basically uh, play the entire range frequency range of the oscillator with a single control, it's really fun. And then uh, if you're tuning to something else, say oscillator two or another external thing, you can fine tune that. Which makes it extremely helpful. Before we talk about the audio part here, uh, let's dive into FM frequency modulation. This is really what this section is all about. You have so many different options for frequency modulation, which is so rare in vintage synthesizers. So many of the synthesizers that came out in the 70s didn't allow this level of control. But again, this is basically a, an ARB 2600 shoehorned into a small case. So let's take a look here. First, we have the sine wave from the LFO as a modulation possibility. You'll recognize this sound. And of course, you would control the rate of that sine wave over here in the low frequency oscillator section. It only goes up to 20 hertz, which is not uncommon for that time. The low frequency oscillator is not where you get your audio range modulation. But you can get vibrato and sireny noises like this. And down here you, in this, uh, on the switch, you can also switch it to the square wave from the LFO. Of course, controlling the speed, the frequency of the effect, and the depth of the effect with the slider. And there's another slider here in the frequency modulation section, and it gives you two options. The first one is sample and hold. Okay, right now, nothing's happening. Why is that? Well, we have to go over to the sample and hold mixer, which we will talk about, which is the worst possible name for this because, well, it's not the worst possible name. I guess it could have been named something even more vague, but what this really is, is a modulation control center, a modulation mixer. Anyway, uh, we need something to feed the sample and hold. So let's pick the noise generator, which is the most standard source of sample and hold. It's a random voltage source. So let's apply that. Okay, so that's our standard sample and hold noise. And of course, uh, we can control the amount. And if we want to control the speed, we'd go back to the low frequency oscillator. Oh, 
Okay, and then down here we have ADSR, which is right over here. It's your envelope generator. So if we want to control, we want to change the pitch of oscillator one over time, we would use the ADSR and it would sound like this. And you can use this to create interesting attack transients. Listen to that, that's almost like a, like a spitty brass valve or something. So yes, this is a function that a lot of analog synthesizers in the seventies were missing. The ability to control the oscillator with the envelope. It's a super great function to have. And it's so interesting that this synthesizer, probably because it was, it's the progeny of the ARP 2600, had so many great modulation opportunities, whereas so many synthesizers in the 70s just thought, oh, the oscillator, you'll just wanna use vibrato on that and that's it. No, we want to have full control over frequency, over a number of different factors and this FM section, which can be used together, is very powerful. That's us using a sine wave LFO in addition to the ADSR. So if you've ever wondered how to make a noise like that, which uh, I'm sure people have because so many synthesizers don't have a functionality where you can apply both the LFO and an envelope at the same time to the oscillator. That's how you do it, kind of a uh, electronic ghost sound. Anyway, and we can uh, do other things too. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to show that <laughs> there are a lot of different things you can do. It's extremely powerful. Okay, let's not forget the section over here uh, called the pulse width. Now this, we've been listening to the sawtooth wave that I set over here in the audio mixer. We can change that to a square wave so that the pulse width uh, functionality can apply. As you know, the pulse width is how the shape of the square wave itself and a different shaped square wave makes a different noise. A more rectangular square wave makes more of a nasal sort of timbre. As can be demonstrated here, this is our pulse width control. So you have the ability, if you just want to change the timbre of your square wave, you can do it here. Now, of course, as I'm moving that, uh, the thing that we all think when we hear that movement is like, oh, pulse width modulation. I want to be able to modulate that. Well, you can with your hand just like that. But if you want to have that more automated, there's also opportunities for that as well, right over here in the pulse width mod section. The first setting is LFO. That's where the sine wave from the LFO contain, controls the width of your pulse. It's kind of a subtle effect. If you want it a little more pointed, you can change the pulse width of the oscillator to make it more pronounced.
And of course, changing the LFO frequency is going to make a difference. Uh, and that's not our only means of changing the pulse width. We can also apply the ADSR. subtle. There you can hear it up in the upper ranges really well. But that's a really nice and common effect. And it'll be exciting when we get into Oscillator 2 to have two of those at the same time, which is also a really cool thing. And then having the ability to switch what the origin of its modulation is. Fantastic. Okay. Um, the last thing in Oscillator 1 is we have this switch up here that says audio keyboard on or keyboard off. Uh, on the keyboard off section, you see this LF. That stands for low frequency. When you turn this on, hear those clicks? That's your oscillator. We've now switched the oscillator into a low frequency oscillator that we can apply elsewhere, especially over here when we get into the sadly named sample and hold mixer. For now, that's oscillator one.